Today we're going to review how to make a forearm-based ulnar gutter splint. Starting with the pattern, you're going to mark the PIP joints of the fingers you wish to include in the splint. In this case, the fourth and the fifth digit. Next, you're going to make a mirror image of those two markings. And then you're going to trace two-thirds the length of the form connecting with that mirror image measurement. Then you can remove the arm and complete your pattern by connecting the dots, making a splint that will encase the fourth and the fifth digits and the forearm. Before fabricating the splint, you want to be sure to pad any bony prominences. In this case, the ulnar styloid is a common site for irritation. Use some foam padding, and a little tip is to cover it with an extra piece of stockinette so it doesn't stick to your splinting material. For molding, have the patient with their elbow bent and their hand in the intrinsic plus position. The intrinsic plus position is very important to prevent tightening of the collateral ligaments, which could result in inability to flex at the MCP joint after a prolonged immobilization period. Here you can also see the therapist has slightly bent the patient's elbow towards their body so that gravity can assist and the material is not falling off of the patient as you're trying to mold it. Next, we're going to clear that thenar eminence to ensure ease with opposition. We're also going to check that the PIP joints are clear in this case. And also, if you notice, the therapist's left thumb is providing some pressure at the crease of the metacarpal, and that ensures a tight, secure fit in that intrinsic plus position. Smoothing it out, we're also ensuring that that ulnar styloid is going to have a nice bubble there, and later you'll see how we repurpose the pad to prevent any skin irritation at that pressure point. For MCP joint flexion, I like to shoot for that 50 to 70 degree sweet spot. Next, we're gonna add our straps. We're gonna do two proximal straps, one at the wrist crease and one further down. Then we're gonna use one strap in between the thumb web space. And the last strap is going to be in between the two fingers that are included in the splint. We're going to do a half moon cutout to make sure there's no irritation in between the last two fingers, rounding the edges for a finished product. And here I'm just showing it's a similar strap for the bottom. We just ran out of material in this case. And lastly, we're going to repurpose that strap and the space we created at the ulnar styloid using the pad we've already placed on the patient, place it on the inside of the splint, and then you can prevent that skin irritation. General rule of thumb for fabrication of an ulnar gutter splint is to include the joints proximal and distal to the fracture site, including the adjacent finger to the fractured finger and putting the patient in that intrinsic plus position at 50 to 90 degrees of MCP joint flexion. Obviously, different physicians have different preferences, so certainly, first and foremost, follow what's on the prescription. Thanks for tuning in.